Morning guys, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're out at, well we're actually out at uh, Horning, but I planned this morning to come to Wroxham um, and do a session on flat floats, lollipop floats, whatever you want to call them. Which I'm still doing, um, I got down to Wroxham, but it was all, I went into a long stay car park, it was all barricaded up. But, uh, before we start, um, Massive thanks to all the new subscribers. Welcome on board. We've got 53 new subscribers last month. And today is Monday the 30th September. So before I go any further, happy birthday, bruv. You all get. Have a good one. I hope you had a good meal out last night. Sorry I couldn't, I couldn't be there, but uh, Canada's a bit far to go. So, uh, yeah, have a good one, bruv. And I'll speak to you later on this afternoon. Or the morning, we'll be there. But, yeah, today... um. I've got down here, I've fully set up and um, I've got two lines predominantly and an edge line, just knock, knocking about for perch and bits and pieces. I've had a good plumb around, um, I'll show you where I am quickly. It's quite high tide today, very high. I'm on the green, where the swanning is. I just plonked myself, there's one spare peg and I've got the main river right in front of me and I've got the ferry I should probably be going out in a little bit I've had a good plum round it's not too deep um, I was hoping to say go to Rockton because I knew the flow would be a bit more, but it's still flowing here, but it's not as fast as I'd like for the lollipop flat float, but um, you're going to get the principle anyway. I've got my spray bar today, so I can put the rod up between my legs, sit it on the spray bar. And I found the ledge today, I've got two ledges, I've got one that's sort of like 10 o'clock to the board and on the far side. And that's at six meters. It's just at the bottom of the shelf there. And the one straight out in front of me, pretty much. Um, just out to right at the end of a nine meter section. I put one board of ground bait in to start with. And I've been fishing about half an hour, 45 minutes. And I've had some really, really big perch, really big perch. And I put a few, uh, the old bait droppers in and I was just starting with um, I've got like a little mix here with some dead squats um, casters hemp and I was catapulting casters and so the hemp and the hemp and wheat mix which I used last week but I just felt like it's, it's not working today the, the river is really clear I can count six or seven rings down on my keep net very clear. It's a big tide. I'm in water. I'm on my box, but I'm in water. Um, it's come over the board in here. So I started putting maggots through, um, and it just changed it like that. It's had some nice roach and hybrids and some really big perch. So I've got, just got a um, single red worm on and a single white maggot. And I'll show you where I'm fishing. So I'm just using a red worm and tip with a white maggot. There's a bit of junk in front of me, so I'm casting it to the right. It's a bit clearer. And I'm just going to put a few live maggots, a few casters, and a little nugget of ground bait. Tiny little ball. Squeezing it really tight and pushing it into my pot. What I've got to do here, because this is some junk about four or five metres, just got to lift it up and quickly swing it out as far as I can get it. And I'm just shipping out all the way to nine metres. Getting to the end of the nine metres. 
put the pole down. I've got two white poles in the distance, the two furthest left ones. I'm just turning the pole over. Get that bait out. There you go. Floats right in that feed. Literally going to put it on my spray bar. Going to ship this back so we've got a tight line. And that's it, one arm. Just resting on my forearm. But it is flowing right to left at the minute. Let's see if I can. I just wish there was a little bit more flow, but um, this rig on the nine meter. I've got a two gram rig. And the one on the six meter, I've got um, one and a half gram. And I've got a tiny little ledge line. I mean, it's literally down the boarding, literally right down as flush to the boarding as I can get. Which is almost a top three. It's absolutely bang on. That's a 0.4 rig on there. I've just been feeding maggots and casters down there and no end of perch, no end of perch. But where I am at here, if I go to the right, it shelves up quite steeply and I'm, I'm at the bottom of a ledge here and it's like a little bowl area. The further I go to the left, it gets deeper, but the further I go out, it, it, shell, it shallows off or it levels out, shall I say. I'm just fishing on the edge of the slope. You can tell by the way the pole sit, or the float's sitting. If I lift this up, let me get to the end of my section, and swing it out. If I keep it to the left, just slightly, on those posts, right in front of me, the float should sit flush. There you go. Sitting flush now. I can just ease that pole back towards me, keeping a tightish line. I was loose feeding, but it wasn't working. I think it might have been bringing the fish up off the bottom. It's so clear. So that's why I'm bait droppering. I'm using a nugget of ground bait in a little toss pot and then just to focus the fish where I am every sort of like third or fourth time I'm going to put a small bait dropper on and just lower it down right where my float is try and concentrate the fish right in one local area I want the ground bait going in um, to attract fish in the area and then just through the bait dropper I'm just going to put maggots, casters, and some, some dead maggots, a few squats. I think it's going to be one of them days as well where you've got to keep switching your lines. You catch sort of three or four or five fish and then it go quiet again and then you rest it and then it come good again. Both the rigs have got Olivets and then number eights and ten stots underneath. But I'm fishing really light. This one's uh, two gram. 
They've both got 0.10 mil main line on it, down to 0.8 hook length. I've just put a size 18 on here, B B520. It did have a, a 0.6 mil uh, hook length on it, but first two fish, I've got them in all right. I've got nice soft elastic, set nice and soft. But just the head shake in the net just broke the elastic, or broke the uh, hook length near the hook. So I just stepped up to 0.8. But I'm just sort of trying a combination of holding it static and letting it run through or holding it back a little bit. And I think what I'm going to do now is when I bring this in, it looks like the tide's risen a lot actually. I think it's still coming in. So I might have to put a couple of inches on. This is the first time I've been here. Well, I've been here before, last last year, piking and that, and I've popped my head down here and had a look, but every time I there's not a lot of room here unless you go into this little bay bit. But, um, there's normally anglers here and it's, it's a very limited spot, but first time I've ever fished here. It's just got a little bit quiet again. Come off this for five ten minutes and then it's settle again. And I'm just going to go on the edge line. Oh, we've got a bite in it. It's going to and it's gone. Oh, we bumped that one. We missed that one. not missed many bites today I think that's the first one but uh, it went under nicely I think it's gonna get busy in a minute the guy was saying that we put the boy out there about 10 minutes ago 15 minutes ago for the sailing club so like get a bit chaotic. There's another bite. I'm just going to let that have it a bit. Seems to be when I'm holding it static on a tight line, they're just not taking it for whatever reason, not confidently. Let's 
they prefer it moving ever so slightly just sort of like half half speed i'm not running it through with the speed of the current i'm just finding it so much better just to hold it back and let it trickle through the peg when it's static they're not taking it constantly Little perch. But I've had three or four really good ones, really good ones, which you'll see at the end. Because I'm using worm today, and I've gone for a barbless hook, quite, totally barbless. Okay, we'll do this again. I've just put. Uh, <clears throat> about two inches on I've got some maggots in the bottom some casters and a little nugget of ground bait and then after this I'll put a bait dropper in just with some dead maggots and casters and then I'll run you through the rig I'm just going to let this one trickle through the peg. Well, what I'll do is I'll hold it still till I get an indication and then I'll just let it run a little bit. Because it's flowing right to left, what I was thinking is I'm feeding in the same spot every time in line with them poles. And then I'm just like fishing a foot either directly on top of it or like a foot to the left because I know the, the bait is going to get washed this way. So I'm fishing in a line basically where I'm feeding. Tell you what guys, if you want some peace and quiet, don't come here. We're gonna have the ferry w uh, in a minute. We've got people boarding the ferry. There were about 10,000 pike anglers everywhere, all chasing two fish. off the float then. I keep seeing, I thought it was a big fish kept jumping but it's those guys over there piking. Mm. And we're again. On the old lollipops. Not big this time. We've got a nice roach. There's a lot of pikers here, a lot of pikers. And one thing I've noticed, I've not had any pike troubles this morning. None at all. Famous last words, eh, but little roach. Try and get this one in the net. Bloody merry-go-round here.
I'm just super, getting a nice decent worm, I'm just cutting it in half and using half a worm at the minute. I'm just tipping it with a white maggot through the tail end, skinny end. Kevin, I'm afraid you're over. He loves his job. He don't half love his job. See, I've just let this float run and it's I've got a bite straight away. I just don't think they want it held static today. Wish there's a little bit more flow on the <clears throat> water. And you got to sit and wait, and when it's static, and you get the perch, but. For the silvers and that, they seem to want it running. Definitely want it running. Or just slowing down.
Este... <laughs> it's like being at Heathrow Bloody Airport. Is everyone ready to board the plane? This is, uh, this tries your bloody patience, I tell you. I think the special school are out on the dinghy today, eh? No disrespect. I want to take you to a cash bar. We're we still running, we're still running. Oh, for sake. <laughs> I think I have to mute this all out and put some nice soothing music over the top of it. Right, note to oneself, don't fricking come here again. Unless you want pleasure fish. Fishing's not been bad, but for filming, not a chance. We've got these guys going around till they get dizzy. I just better watch my uh, pole because I don't know what this. Uh... Where this boat's going to turn. And I've got a bite and it's gone under. It's better fish, probably a perch.
Sorry guys, it looks like I'm gonna have to give up here because they're just they're just passing in front of me. <laughs> Not a lot I'm gonna do. Not a lot I can do. You go around this nut boy until they get dizzy. Must be training school or learner's thing or something. Yeah. It's been one of them mornings where nothing has gone right this morning. I got up, dropped my coffee cup, smashed it all over the kitchen. Got to. Frick's sake. He loves his bloody job too much. Happy Harry on his bloody blower. <sighs> Got down at Roxham. The whole park has been shut, shut up. Gates up, CCTV there, stop you getting in. Couldn't find a way to the river. Come down here, missed the turning, pitch black, foggy, four, four degrees this morning. let this run ever so slightly just, just going to slide it along with spray bar Not, so I can sort of stop it and I'm about say three inches over depth Just sort of like working the peg. Moving it a couple of inches and then holding it, moving it a couple of inches and holding it. thing with the uh, flat float you got to get the grammage right for the amount of flow because too light a float and too heavy a flow the floats going to be laying back as the bulk weights pushed up with the current too heavy a float like this one is ever so slightly too heavy. I'll probably get away with a gram and a half on here. It's leaning forward. Ever so slightly. It's not too bad, but I'm hoping when this tide starts to ebb, that'll be all right, but uh... I mean, at the minute, I think just a regular float would be ideal, the more ideal. That's probably the reason why we're not getting a bite, there's no bait on. So it's a barbless hook, so we've got to be careful when I'm shipping out too fast and it's kept coming off the hook. I say I'm running you through the rig, but it's nothing fancy. It's just two gram float. This is just is like a normal float, but it's a lollipop flat float. Ah! 
I don't know what that's in aid of, but it doesn't seem like for what, I don't know. It's just census two gram float. Sorry, this light is awful. Everything's awful today. Census two gram float, nice little lollipop flat float. Yeah, I've got two gram census flat float. Nice little lollipop float. I've got one rubber above, sorry, on a stem, going through two eyes. One, two, three, four rubbers on the stem. Keep it nice and straight and level. I've got my usual teal elastic, really light, really soft. 0.10 hook length. And it's There must be hundreds of perch down there. It's one a chuck. And there it goes again. Slowly going under, and we're in. And it's, oh, it's a nice rope with a rod. Nice rod. No. Nice big bud. Okay, be down the edge. I four or five fish. I've got, I've got three swimming around with my feet in this gully here. <laughs> but uh, I'll just put a one bait dropper in and another good nugget of ground bait with loads of casters and I put some chop worm through and some maggots. I've just gone out and it's sort of settled it a bit. Just brought the uh, shot all the way down to the hook link, so I've got three in a row now. So a big dropper and just my bolt shot. And there's a bite. Let's go. And we're on. And oh, we're off again. Missed it. I think today with the uh, being bright sunshine, it was four degrees this morning. The water being crystal clear. It's just a case of sitting and waiting for the bites. I missed that one. Let's just try double maggot. I think when I finish, I'm going to go up there and shove that fog on somewhere.
got more bells and whistles and flags and I don't There's a lot of floating junk at the minute, I don't know where that's all coming from. So much junk on the line. Oh, we've got some new flags and a ball. I missed that. Just watching the flags. <laughs> Right. Here come the yacht school, so I might have to ship him for a minute. Junk off the line. And that's already off. A bit some more baiting. Hold it in a minute. My parents let me be in videos all the time. <laughs> Can I please? Alright guys, I'm all done fishing. 
I've only been here, it's just well, it's about half 11 hours, so about three hours. But I'm not going to put this out as a flat float video because things weren't right today, conditions, uh, all the promotion going on. But we've had a really, really good net of perch. The really big ones in here. Probably about 30 fish, predominantly all perch. All about a pound. Nice rod. Not a bad net of fish. Well, I'll get all these back, mate. Right, tight lines, guys. I'll see you again in another video. Okay, guys, I'm all done. Back at home. It was a good session. I know it was um, just under three hours, but it was more. Oh, it was just everything was going wrong today. The noise, the chaos. Um, yeah, it, the flow conditions just wasn't right for the video that I wanted to do. That's not to say the fishing wasn't good. Um, some fantastic perch there, um, some lots of good rud. Um, didn't get the footage that I wanted to do so I'm just going to put it out as a normal video um, for like fishing because um, I got down there set up and I don't know if you noticed there's a little fishing boat to my left. Just a little moored up and I was just about to start filming, a guy came down, he lived in Horning, and I was chatting to him and I said I'm about to start, he said are you making a film, I said yeah it's going to go on YouTube, he said oh, I, don't want to, I don't want to be put on YouTube, um, I come here every day and this is fair enough, I didn't want to get into an argument with him, I know I'm within the rights to film um, but it would have meant blurring him out or zooming in and shuffling the screen along and um, yeah so I couldn't get bothered to get into an argument and um, I tried to film what I could. The six meter line was working really well, but it was t 10 o'clock and it would have been putting them in, in the frame all the time. And uh, I was catching roach and bird at one after the other on the six meter line. Um, but then things went wrong again on that. Um, I, I hit a snag, I had a decent fish, and about five meters, there was like a lot of, if it was straight out in front of me, there was a lot of grating on the line and obviously a bit of wood down there or sunken boat or something just something, something really grating and try to pull for a break and the, the elastic snapped. I managed to get the rig back um, just sort of put the pole out and wrapped, wrapped it around the line I got the rig back but um, that sort of like sat that rig off and then I just had to concentrate on the 9 metre line and it fished really well but as soon as that sailing school started um, it all went iffy and the noise and the chaos and hey, it, just, it was just one of them days, just one of them days where it wasn't meant to be. But um, still fantastic fishing. I reckon if, if you wait another two or three weeks till the season's over, um, the guy was saying the boat is going to stop in a week or two's time at the end of the season and the sailing school will probably stop. And if you go down and, you know, in a month's time, it will probably be a different story. Um, so I should probably do that on another video. But um, I will persevere. The next time I'm going out, uh, I will put another flat float video up. Um, I'll obviously pick somewhere on the air, somewhere with a decent flow, and, and go through it all and go through it properly. But anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. There's plenty of nice big fish in there, some plenty, lovely perch, and three hours of cracking net of fish. So tight lines, guys. All the best. See you again. Take care.